Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing Macintosh's brand new solid state preamp, the C49. This new edition and the first opportunity to see it here in New Zealand uh, means that I'm very, very proud to uh, um, share this with you today with this unboxing video. So let's start. Firstly, Macintosh's packaging. All of their products come in massive oversized double shipping boxes. The purpose of that, of course, is to ensure that everything arrives to you in perfect condition, no matter where you might be in the world. Everything is taped closed with Macintosh's signature fabric tape, and there's model and seal number information on most of the corners. Open the, opening these boxes is relatively straightforward. Simple enough process, craft knife along, and then very carefully along the top, ensuring that the knife doesn't go too far into the box. Once opened, you get an opportunity to see the double boxing that Macintosh is famous for. Each of their pieces is suspended inside closed cell foam. And the heavyweight cardboard box can be discarded. So the closed cell pieces are designed to give you a nice little firm grip of the inside. And then the inner box, which gives you a better understanding of the size of the product that's in it. There's two large handles. And it's very, very straightforward again to open that by running a craft knife along the Macintosh tape at one end. At this point, again, Macintosh's packaging comes in. Every element is very, very well thought out. You'll see even this piece of cardboard is beautifully folded to take into account the slightly raised front edge of the uh, signature Macintosh uh, front panel. The back flap helps to ensure that it is protecting any of the accessories inside. In the box, we have Macintosh's comprehensive user manual. Have a good read. It, it uh, talks about every element of the operation and setup of this product. We have a New Zealand IEC power cord. It's got a big nuggety plug and it's a good long link. We have Macintosh's remote control. Now this is protected, held with a couple of pieces of cello tape and protected inside a uh, bubble bag. Okay, that element of it is very, very easy. It's got a bit of double-sided tape holding it closed with some AAA batteries and then the remote control itself. The remote's lovely and elegant, nice little uh, chrome trim to it and very, very easy to operate. It also helps to uh, control many of the other pieces of Macintosh as well. Looking at the product and lifting it out, just put it off one side for a moment. You'll see as you lift it out, the packaging and again how elaborate it is as far as keying the feet of this product into predetermined locations inside this cardboard. It means that no matter how this is shifted around, that piece is locked in place and isn't going to rattle or roll or be damaged and it. So it's wonderful that Macintosh has taken so much care. Now the preamp itself is enclosed inside an oversized plastic bag. Opening that part of it is very, very straightforward. Simple nicks on the cello tape, ensuring, of course, that we're not damaging the bag, just the cello tape, gives us the ability to very, very easily open that bag and slide it off. Now, in that bag is a desiccant. Um, a moisture remover inside a little cloth pouch to ensure that it can't scratch the product in transit. Okay, so looking at this for the first time. Firstly, it's glass front panel. Everything is screen printed and illuminated from the rear, ensuring that any and all of the 
buttons and other things can never have the little printing wear off in time. It's a little signature of Macintosh and it's been like that for many, many years now. Um, looking at the amplifier, we'll start over this side with the uh, Macintosh's now renowned HXD um, headphone output. The HXD is an opportunity for it to create a more room-like feel from a uh, headphone that may be closed back. Um, along one side is the ability to toggle between the two outputs. You'll see that on the back. Above it is the input selector. Now this is a rotary encoder. Uh, um, pushing and holding it allows it to go into setup modes and select things within its setup and ensuring that many of the features that can be uh, um, configured or otherwise changed um, are done so inside its operation um, and microprocessor rather than by cluttering the front with switches or dials. Speaking of the front, we've got an infrared sensor, we've got Macintosh's screened, uh, screen printed logo which is illuminated, and a two line dot matrix display. Again, hang around for some photographs and I'll take some close ups of all of these things. The last is the volume knob, and with that, again, as part of the setup and trim process, um, pushing and holding brings you into the setup menu, while this allows you to um, navigate between the options. You've got its main power button and pressing and holding that for a 5 or 10 seconds will, will factory reset the unit. You've got a mute button and you've got the ability to turn on and off the tone. Raising it forward you see that this is not a shallow product. It's not massively deep but it's beautiful to see that uh, there's enough ventilation and from a quality of build it's um, stable enough that if you need to you could stack something on top. Again, there's depth as we look at the side, and it's worth mentioning the twin chassis approach that Macintosh often has with their products. And now the back. Now this is kind of where the magic happens. A preamp like this is designed to be simple and elegant in its, promo in its approach, and hide all of the features at the back. And this is where all the nuts and bolts, all the cables come and, come and go from. Looking at it, the first is the IEC power input. We've got over here a USB port simply for the purposes of servicing and uh, software updating. We've got control. Now this is all via 3.5mm mono and 3.5mm stereo interconnecting cables. 12V um, relays and uh, control is, is implemented via uh, inter interconnecting cables and RS-232 control input can also be applied. Above this we've got the two balanced and single-ended outputs. Now of course they relate to the two button switches I showed you at the front. Um, each is labelled output 1 and 2 and gives you the ability with this model to have a third output which is fixed, meaning this could be looped into something else if required. Um, so balanced outputs matched with a single-ended RCA and again a single-ended RCA matched with its set of balanced. Input wise it's got two balanced inputs, labelled um, balanced 1 and 2, although these are now allocatable in the setup to say and be whatever you would like. It has three traditional RCA or unbalanced inputs, and then a dedicated moving magnet and moving coil phono preamp with a good nuggety ground. Some of the magic that Macintosh have added over the years is highlighted by this unit. It is their new DA1 modular DAC. Now this was introduced in some of their integrated amplifiers a while ago um, and Macintosh has celebrated the DA2 for some of their, their higher end reference pieces as well. This modular design means that the unit can be, uh, uh, this module can be removed and enable the unit to be kept up to date as far as whatever streaming service or whatever input and output you may require. The current one features the asynchronous USB an MCT digital link, which is for Macintosh CD transports, two optical and two coaxial digital in. This 32-bit DAC is reference as far as its quality, and it is beautiful to see it in such an affordable preamp. So, there we have it. Macintosh's uh, brand new solid-state preamp, the C49, unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.